Welcome back to our YouTube channel, ladies and gentlemen. The immediate former president of the Republic of Kenya, Uhuru Mugai Kenyatta, is trending at number one. He's trending at a time when the man he promoted to the position of the Lieutenant General before he completed his second term. The man he knew very well was going and was poised to become the new chief of general staff. Francis Ogola is no more and his lifeless body is speaking volumes to anyone who cares to listen to what that lifeless body is saying. Before Uhuru completed his second term, he had promoted uh, to the position of the Lieutenant General. Mbadi, the man who was manning the Nairobi Metropolitan Services, and Francis Omondi Ogola. And Uhuru knew very well that the vector was pointing at the Kenya Air Force, according to the Tonja rules, and that Ogola was to become the new CDF. Today, leaders gathered at uh, Ulinzi Sports Center in a requiem mass to pay their, what, what may seem to be the penultimate respect to the fallen hero. Of course, there are other eight who we continue to pray for and we continue to send our condolences. But Uhuru Kenyatta was missing. I'm trying to look at some people saying that he was not around. But I want us to look at uh, this picture because it is at the center of all the reasons why Uhuru Kenyatta is trending. And someone summarized, you know, there is a Chinese saying that a picture is worth more than a thousand words. So someone posted this picture and this picture trended so much and it went viral on the night, uh, on the night of uh, 20th January this year when Uhuru was to attend the inauguration ceremony or the taking oath ceremony of uh, the president of Congo Felix Shikedi. Now, instead of Uhuru Kenyatta going there aboard Kenya Airways, he decided to use a Ugandan airline and it raised questions. This person who is called Rajini Nicholas added something to this picture, and this is what he was saying that it seems former President Uhuru Kenyatta still receives intel from NIS and Secret Service. Look at that picture and try to connect it to what this person is saying. Politics is about perception. This person simply means that Uhuru Kenyatta was advised by someone from the NIS or Secret Service not to abort Kenyan airline and instead use the Ugandan airline. Reasons that I don't understand. But in the arena of street politics, the relationship between Uhuru Kenyatta and William Ruto is not very cordial, owing to the fact that during their, towards the tail end of their second term, they fell out. And when Ruto took over power, his Northland farm was invaded. His mother was denied security. His son was frustrated. Some of his businesses like Brookside in Uganda were frustrated. And Uhuru Kenyatta has refused to bow down. His party is still in limbo. We do not know who has the certificate and who is the rightful owner. So their relationship is one that it's still not cordial. And some people in the reign of street politics believed that he didn't want to use the Kenya airline because someone would have, uh, you know, practiced mischief and his life ends just like that. This story that is trending today is directly connected to what the tragedy that has just befallen our nation. 
because the mainstream media are giving us reports that in the wake of uh, elusive evidence, in the wake of search for truth in exactly what happened before and during that air crash, the shocking news is that the arrangements that were made at the last minute resulted in the former general Francis Ogola being given another chopper instead of the one that had been planned that he would use to go and inspect schools in the banditry infected or infested areas. And that has really caught many wondering. A whole CDF, a man who sometimes travels in the same flight as the president, that arrangements were made by some government, top government official, and the chopper that he was supposed to use was being used by that the, the, the top official, and then he was given another chopper that finally ended not only his life, but the lives of nine, eight other people. Very sad. Even if the government wanted to look very innocent, even if the UDA government is not involved, ladies and gentlemen, if you were in a team that is doing investigation, let's say you are a private team that has been contracted to try and look into exactly what happened, and then you are told that this is one of the senior most civil servants, the head of the military, the man we have entrusted with our security and the security of the president and the deputy and all that. Being given another chopper at the last minute, surely, surely, would even exonerate. I think this story is coming at a time when people are looking for the truth. And you remember yesterday when Babu Wino raised such questions, he wanted the right people in the military to look into such and consider his questions, his concerns, as they do the investigation. And then none other than the capsulate member of parliament, Oscar Sudi, replied Babu Wino, as if Babu had targeted Sudi in the very pertinent and legitimate questions that he was demanding. Is the CDF supposed to fly without an escort helicopter? Is it the one who's supposed to be in, you know, inspecting schools? Where were the other people like the GSU? I mean, there are several questions that are being asked even by laymen. A layman like me who does not understand much about the military affairs. A layman like me who's not even a security expert. But one would look at things and, and, and feel things are not right. And then people have concluded that the same thing that befell the major would have befallen Uhuru Kenyatta had it not been for the intelligence. Of course, Uhuru has never spoken, he has never told anyone that, you know, I did not use the Kenya airline because of this. But a former, immediate former commander in chief, choosing not to use our airline, and then three months or four months down the line, the man in charge of our security is dead, then people would connect and say, is there a problem? No wonder this guy says, it seems former President Uru Kenyatta still receives intel from NIS and secret services. Ladies and gentlemen, at a time like this, people need to unite. People need to stop speculations. And I want to tell you why this is not very good for William Samuel This government is still very young. But when it is wrapped up in an, an unexplained deaths, it really paints it wrong. A government that came in at a time when they used to complain that they were being frustrated in the previous government, it does not aga well. A government that is looking to unite Kenyans without looking at uh, beyond the boundaries of, 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 of tribe, it is very wrong. A government that is constituted and has continued to perpetuate this idea that they are a praying nation, when they want to, to when they want 
rains, when, when they, they, they feel that we need rains, they pray and they say God has answered our prayers. They want to take people to Haiti, they pray, and, 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 and the, the first lady is praying. Everything is about prayer. They prayed about bandits, and William Ruto said that we should take uh, you know, the word of God to the, to the places where there are bandits. And now, because of the bandit, the Ogola is gone. A government that is constituted by people who call themselves men of God. It is wrong for blood, blood-stained fingers to be, you know, be being pointed at the government, even if they are innocent. People are arguing that what would William Ruto gain if Ogola is dead? Nothing. And many are trying to exonerate and saying that William Ruto could have not uh, have done this. Then who could have done it? It is only the government. And the man who enjoys the best intelligence is William Ruto. And people are asking William Ruto, can you do the best investigation so that we know what happened? Do you believe Uhuru had a reason to fear considering what has happened? I want to end this by telling you this, ladies and gentlemen. A few years ago, for those who can remember, when John de Mabior Garang, they had fought and they wanted secession from the, the main Sudan, now called the Northern Sudan, I think. And they were fighting for the, the, the oil, oil bells in that country. And finally, when they, they, they did uh, a referendum, People voted overwhelmingly, and uh, mostly those black, tall Sudanese decided that we want our own nation, and they seceded. It did not take long, and many people felt that Garang had a very strong stand, and he was not going to allow the Western machination to infiltrate Sudan. And many argued that even in East Africa, there are people who are scared that he was moving with a lot of speed and he would even become uh, politically very strong. Garang was invited to visit one of the East African nations to be very precise in Uganda. That was the last time the people of South Sudan saw him alive. And the plane that he was given by the state of Uganda crashed just somewhere. To date, the death of Garang is unraveled. I remember one day Rebecca Nyandeng, who is the wife to the widow now, to Garang, once said that he, she believes that her husband never died a natural death. Many a times when politicians die in road accidents or aircraft or people of influence, then just know that there are probabilities that they were never natural deaths. And people are asking the government to form an investigative neutral experts to give us the truth, which if you ask me at a personal level, I don't know about at a personal level, because I've got my democratic right to believe or not, I don't trust that there can ever be any transparent investigation, not unless we get an, investigat an investigative team from the Eastern powerhouse, the Eastern superpowers, maybe Russia or China. We will wait very calmly. And I know tomorrow the general will be buried. And we want to let his soul rest in, rest in peace, but we will still advocate for justice, for the truth to be known. That is my check, ladies and gentlemen.